now that we have created and saved our new ArchiCAD project, the next thing would be to start doing some uh, settings as we prepare to. The next thing would be to start doing some settings as we prepare to put more details to our project. So in this video, we look at story settings and how to set working units and dimensioning units. So let's go to the project map and have the ground floor activated. Then at the bottom right, we have these settings here below the properties. We have settings. Click on these settings, which is going to open the story settings. Here we are able to either insert new stories or delete existing stories. And we are also able to change the various dimensions such as height to the next story, which as at now is set as 3 meters from ground floor to the next story, which is the first floor. So I'm going to give this story specific names like I love the first one here. Uh, the first is ground floor. So the next is going to be my first floor. And the third there is going to be my second, second floor. So when you are done, you have uh, below the, 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 the stories, you have these options for either inserting a new story above. So if you click on this, see we have inserted a new story above uh, story number two. So if you click on insert below, you'll have inserted a new story below this one that had been uh, earlier selected. So let's say you want to delete an existing uh, story. What are we going to do? We'll just click to select, then choose this option, delete story like that. Select that, delete like that. And then we'll uh, click on OK to make sure that those settings have now been saved to the project. After doing the story settings, I want us to go uh, uh, to view. Then under view, we'll act activate the construction grid display so that our workspace is going to look like that with the, the various grids. Then from there, we look at customizing, customizing the working units and the dimensioning units, which is accessible under options. Then we go to project preferences and the very first option here will be our working unit. So if you click on that, you'll have that uh, dialog box opening. And I want us to set the various units for the length the area, the volumes, angles, and the layout units. So under length, we'll have units in measured in terms of millimeters to, two de to zero decimal places. In terms of areas, we'll have areas measured in square meters to two decimal places. And then the volume is going to be measured in cubic meters to two decimal places. And an angles will be given in decimal degrees. We have options for either degrees, minutes, or seconds. You can give... Uh, you can measure angles in terms of radians or maybe the, 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 the specific surveyor's unit that is going to be provided by your surveyor. So in terms of this project, I will have the angle units measured in decimal degrees to zero de decimal places. And the layout unit as millimeters to zero decimal places. Then when I'm done with that, I'll click on OK to make sure that those saving settings have been saved. Then still under options, project preferences, I will click on dimensions so that I can be able to set uh, my preferred dim dimensioning units for the project. So here under dimensions, we have currently this set as meters to three decimal places with the extra accuracy, with the extra accuracy dis disabled. So we want to select here this option for plane millimeter which is going to change the linear dimension units to millimeters to zero decimal places and that is what we want to have for the project so when that is done just click on ok here and we'll have the setting implemented so let's go to them to document documenting tools and select this dimension so that we can be able to set, so that we can be able, so that we can be able to customize, so that we can uh, make uh, some customizations here. So I'll, I'll uh, click on the settings dialog for the dimensioning tool, and this is going to open the dimension default settings. So under default settings for the dimensions, we have options for the dimension type, which is in this case we are having a linear method selected. And we have this as the marker type. 
<laughs> we have the various types that we can choose from. So these are the types that are available. So you, you are free to check on any of these. And then under witness line, I will have the line selected as custom height for the witness line. For the pens here, this I'm going to set to 48. And then this for the, the, for the, the pen sets for the witness line, I'm going to set that to pen 88. So when you are done with dimension type, you can close that. Then move to text style. I want to have the font, font type as DM Sans selected. And the pen type will be pen 46 for the dimensions text and the font size will be two millimeters. So that's set as that. Under marker and witness line options, we have options for changing or rather for customizing the size of the marker and the size of the witness line, which is indicated here as custom witness, custom witness line length set as three millimeters. So we have pointer options, which is basically options for the line type and the pen sets and the type, uh, the, the arrow heads and the, the pen sets for the arrow head. So we have dimension details, which allows you to either display the height of the openings in your floor plan, um, uh, floor plan dimensions and options for uh, dimensioning the various faces of the walls and the slabs so with that the very last options here are for the properties which will uh, have we we'll leave it as default here under renovation so for the property settings we will we'll, uh, have the default archive settings for that so when you are done with dimension default selection settings so we'll click on ok and those settings will be saved for our project so for us to make sure that the settings that we have the settings that we have put in place have been saved in the project we'll go to file and save the project we go to file so under file we have this option save so click on save and the settings are going to be saved in the project